Hey, 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 everybody. Today or tonight, depending on wherever you are in the world, we're going to be talking about lithopanes. If you don't know what a lithopain is, it's a very finely detailed 3D printed panel that kind of when lit up from behind it shows a really pretty picture. A little something like this one here. My brother getting married. Or like this one here. My cousins. Or like what we're going to talk about today, how to do it, this one right here. So we're going to delve into the really quick and easy way to achieve this in just a few seconds, very quickly and easily, using probably some of the products, or, or sorry, some of the uh, programs you've already got. So let's get started, let's do it. Okay, the first thing you want to do is choose a photo. If you haven't, pause now and come back. Next, open up your video or e photo editing software. I'm using Lightroom and flick your photo straight to black and white. The reason is you're using gray scales in litho panes and it's going to give you a better idea of what you're going to get out of the printer. Next thing is bring up your shadows in this case, just to bring a little bit more detail into my subjects. Bring down highlights, uh, bringing back again that detail out of the blown out areas on the foreheads and etc. etc. And you know, play with those. Play with those bouncing backwards and forwards. You can see in the forehead here, there's a little bit more detail in the, in the noses and cheeks. Also in the bricks behind, that's, that's highlights. If highlights go too high, you get blowouts. So just play with bringing down your shadows, bring it, or sort of bringing out your shadows. Usually works for me, bringing highlights down, exposure, play with that. Now for this one, I thought it was, it was gonna be a lot better to sort of blow out some of those details in the background. So I've gone here, I've grabbed my exposure tool and, um, and I've basically just painted in the background and then I usually do the exposure actual adjustment afterwards so I can get it right. But you do what works for you. Make sure you've got um, your quick mask on or, or smart mask on and just paint in the background. Smart mask basically means the little square right, or sorry, the little cross right in the middle of the circle is what's going to be effectively blacked out. And then the bigger circle on the outside of that is gonna be feathered, so slightly less attacked. And in extreme uh, contrast changes, it'll be left right alone altogether, which worked well here. So that's what I did, blacked out the background altogether. Then I saved that file um, once I was happy with it, and I opened up my Cura program here. The next thing you do wanna do is locate where you've saved your image. This took me a while, so we're gonna skip through it. Um, the parameters I've used here, I've practiced and worked with. It it's really works well for me. It took about seven goes to get it to this stage, to where I'm happy with it. But play with it, work with what works best for you, and see if you can come up with something better, let me know. Right, now, base is literally where the image is sitting on. So base for me, I find 0.75 mil works very well for me. Uh, height of the image, that's one mil. That again has worked well, you can alter it if you like. I've been making my little lithos, just little miniature handheld type things, so 65 mil across, long edge works well. Now darker is higher, works well for a true image. If you reverse that, you're gonna get a negative, what looks like an old film negative, but I like this better. No smoothing, way too blocky for my likings. Light smoothing's great. Heavy smoothing, you're just gonna lose far too much detail. Uh, it, it just, yeah, it's a mess. You, uh, you don't get too, you don't get enough detail. So here's our little image. Cura's put it together for us. It, it looks great. Um, you can even sort of tell what it is now in, in this form. Looks, looks wonderful. So again, settings to the left. Settings that I've been working with. The 0.08 gives me good definition with my 0.04 nozzle. 100% um, density is very important, just so you don't get any refraction or, or anything from your infill layers. I use a brim just to make sure, in this case, ABS isn't gonna, isn't gonna lift or peel. And I've got my speeds fairly low at 50 millimeters per second. Now you need to send that off to your printer, get printing, good luck, let me know how you go. Guys, good luck, I hope that helps anybody out, especially if you're running late with any sort of last minute Christmas gifts or Hanukkah gifts. Any success stories, feel free to get in contact either via Facebook, Instagram, on here, email, whatever. And if I get enough positive responses, maybe I'll do a video showing off your guys' success stories as well. So get in contact, leave me comments, leave me a like if, if you did like this video, and subscribe if you want to subscribe and see more in the future. Thanks, bye.